Hey there, Arconiacs. This season caught me by surprise. The storytelling choices the writers have made have been fantastic, darker than before, but I'm here for it. Not a whole lot happened in this episode, but we'll go over it. Some of it out of order. We're going to recap the episode and then break down Only Murders in the Building, Season 4, Episode 1, Once Upon a Time in the West. The episode opens on the night of Death Rattle Dazzle's premiere, with the trio recording the final episode of their podcast, where they solve Ben Glenmore's murder. As we saw in the trailer, the lights go out in the Arconia, Oliver and Charles, longtime residents, attribute it to a power surge. Initially, I thought the show would take us back in time, but instead it's framed in a way where the trio is unaware of Saz's death, at least for this day. After recording, the trio heads to Charles' apartment for a nightcap, where I expected them to find Saz's body, but there was none. The next morning, Charles notices that he hasn't heard from Saz. As he's in the kitchen, the kettle whistles, and he thinks he's hearing things when Oliver and Mabel show up at his door, talking about how Death Rattle Dazzle has been cancelled. Charles mentions to them hearing whistles and Howard arrives with his new dog, Gravy. Howard suggests that he and Mabel and Gravy should start a podcast. Gravy barks and Howard surprised says she's never acted like that before, so he takes her for a walk. The trio then receives an email from Bev Mellon, who wants to make a movie about the podcast. Charles also gets a text from Asaz's phone saying that she had to jet off last minute and do some work for Scott Bakula. The trio decide to go to Hollywood where they meet with Bev and her team at Paramount about making the movie. Unknown to them, the movie has already been further along in the production than they realize. The guys are fine with selling their life rights, but Mabel is hesitant. Mabel reflects on how the world sees her as a homeless, jobless, mumbling millennial. She doesn't want to be known as that and doesn't want to be that. The trio then visits Saz's apartment at Sunset Swan, finding packages and mail piled up, indicating she hasn't been home for a while. Later, they attend the Only Murders in the Building party where they meet their movie counterparts. They get acquainted with their on-screen versions. Oliver's counterpart, Zach, talks down to him. He doesn't think that he's very talented at all, suggesting that Oliver lives in his own world. Eugene, who's portraying Charles, is already studying him too closely, and Eva, playing Mabel, keeps insisting that they're essentially the same age. She gives Mabel advice says that if she signs her life rights, she should make sure she gets as much out of it as possible and build something for herself. Later at the party, Charles thinks he sees Saz, but it's actually Scott Bakula. He reveals that he hasn't heard from Saz, and she never made it to the gig where she was supposed to double for him. Mabel then negotiates with Bev, agreeing to sign her life rights, but we don't know yet what her demand is. Charles then informs Mabel and Oliver that Saz is missing. They return to Saz's apartment. Charles picks the lock. Inside, they find a shrine to broken bones and replacements, and they state that they all come from Bulgaria. Suddenly, a glass shatters. We don't know what that was. And Mabel gets a text from Howard about doing the podcast with his dog, Gravy. The podcast title was Animal Jobs. Charles then gets a call from Lester talking about changing his window because of a bird or something. They realize that it's a bullet hole. Mabel learns that Gravy was a Cavadier dog. So the trio head back to New York thinking something nefarious has happened. They go back to Charles' apartment where they see the bullet hole and blood on the stove. Howard returns with Gravy who leads them out to the out-of-service incinerator chute. 
They go down to the incinerator where Charles digs through the ashes and finds the bones from Bulgaria, confirming that these are actually Saz's remains. Charles then gets a response to his text earlier to Saz's phone, where he said, you're not Saz, who are you? And the person who's likely the killer said, not your fucking friend. It was an emotional ending for the first episode, much more than I expected to happen, but now let's do some decoding. This episode did an excellent job at building suspense and subverting our expectations. When the power went out in the Arconia, Charles and Oliver mentioned that it hadn't happened since they banned the old incinerator. And knowing that this is what happened with Saz, that she died and she was burned, this gives us a time frame for when Saz was burned. The framing of the shots at the beginning of this episode, the anticipation that we felt of finding her body in his apartment was great. We as the audience know that Saz was shot there and not knowing what happened gave us hope that she might still be alive or someone moved her body. Things like when Charles entered his apartment saying, there she is, but he was talking about the bottle of wine, seeing Mabel walk around and seeing the blood on the stove thinking it's wine. Simple little things like that made us think something was going to happen but it just pulled us back and we did not know what happened to Saz's body. It left us feeling as if she still might be somewhere. And that's what made it really hurt at the end. This scene had the simple key strike repeatedly getting louder and faster. It really riled me up and it felt more meaningful and stronger having that play over the last scenes of the episode when they actually find her remains. Again, the things like Oliver banging on Charles' door once he opens, just saying dead. But he was talking about the play. It was very smart play on words. And Howard has been suspicious. He's, his behavior adds tension. And you guys know he's always been suspicious to me, even from season one, before anything about a Moriarty character was introduced. I've made crazy videos about him being a mastermind of things happening in the Arconia. The fact that he shows up with a cadaver dog as a new pet the morning after Saz dies tells me something is off. When Howard first comes to Charles' apartment, he tells Mabel that Gravy was a working dog. She asked what kind of work, and Howard stated that they didn't tell me. He didn't know what her previous job was. Later in the episode, while they're in Saz's apartment, he reveals to her through text that she was a cadaver dog, and that's why her name is spelt G-R-A-V-E-Y. This all happens in one day, and maybe Howard learned about the dog's past job after the fact, after that morning, but the fact that he wanted to do a podcast specifically about dogs' jobs, and surely he saw the spelling of Gravy's name before adopting her, makes me think that Howard did know that she was a cadaver dog, but for some reason didn't mention it when she barked right where a murder take place. To me, it seems like a bold-faced lie. Howard saying that he did not know that Gravy was a cadaver dog. Not sure if this will be super relevant to Saz's murder, but Mabel talks with Eva, who explains that they aged her up because a focus group found their age difference creepy. Now, this might come into play with what Mabel gets out of the deal in selling her life rights. Maybe she should, maybe she could have secured a producer credit and use it to challenge the stereotypes about her friendship with Charles and Oliver being creepy or unorthodox. Later, when the trio returns to Saz's apartment and goes inside, there are items on her desk, and some of them. Some of them we do see on the murder board later in the season. We know this from the shot of the murder board in the trailer. One note, it says sick 
Pup. It's on the Sengia Heights Stationery. I hope I pronounced that right. That is a neighborhood in LA. The note has a coffee stain. It's unclear if it relates to Howard's new dog. This note was likely there before Howard got the dog and it's not a pup, rather the opposite, a retired dog. Though Howard does refer to the dog as a puppy, so it could be connected. There is also a Lesbian Brothers Invitational Golf Tournament scorecard. This could be from an event led by Trina and Tawny Brothers, the directors of the Only Murders in the Building film. It would make sense that Saz would know them working in LA so much. An item that is on the murder board is a flight ticket and on it the name Helga is written across it in red marker. We don't know who Helga is. The only Helga I'm familiar with actually is Helga Pataki and it's the name of a character in Hey Arnold. I don't think that has anything to do with anything but I just thought it was funny. So I wanted to throw that in there but the ticket is from LA to New York. Another note that appears on the murder board says Dudnoff. I don't know what this means. I mentioned that in the last video, but it appears with a combination to a safe. We have a picture of that safe or locker in the trailer and the numbers 773440 seem to be the combination. Interestingly enough, I'm 40, so I know that when you turn these numbers upside down, it says, oh hell. Whatever is inside of that locker, I think it may hold some significance later. There's also a note that says West Tower Arconia, and another that says cancel doctor appointment because I will be out of town. I believe she was canceling a doctor's appointment, possibly because she was heading to New York to see Charles for the opening night of Death Rattle. There's also a pile of scripts that are present with the top one being titled Access Denied. The future is terminal and on it is a picture of Scott Bakula attached so it looks like that might have been the film that she was supposed to be working with him on. The piece of paper that I mentioned before that says West Tower Arconia suggests that Sass might have uncovered something someone wanted to keep hidden. It appears that the person who killed Sass disliked Charles, but I'm thinking Charles was definitely the target. Whoever this is, they know Charles, it seems, very well. They managed to kill Sass, clean up the body, knew about the incinerator, burned the body without anyone knowing. They kept Saz's phone and pretended to be her to make Charles think that she was still alive. Why would they do this? This is not clear to me yet. It seems as if they are purposefully antagonizing Charles. Even if Charles was the target and Saz is an somewhat innocent bystander, they are still trying to antagonize Charles and make him feel horrible about what happened. I do have to point out that Howard wasn't in the room when Charles received the text from whoever it was pretending to be Sass, so it could have been him, but it's too early to make that kind of assumption. I'll try and dive deeper into that in another video later this week. Some of my theories about this season has already been disproven, mainly the timeline, but one major theory just got a hint that it may be true. I guess that the lady that we saw in the trailer holding the rifle in the window was Oliver retelling the story of someone who killed in the Arconia in the past. I said that the killer knew about this story and chose that room to do what they did. Early in this episode, as they're walking from the elevator to Charles' apartment, Mabel asks what should they do for the next podcast, mentioning that Oliver talked about a cold case. There is a cold case in the building, and I think this lady, whoever it is that we see in the trailer, is the subject of the cold case. I think it could be the same killer or someone 
who just knew about it. Either way, I do believe that that cold case will link to Saz's murder. That's all I got for now. Um, if you could give this video a like, it helps out a whole lot. Get it out there to some other people. I have another video later this week, probably on Thursday or Friday. Once I've watched the episode again, I've only watched it uh, twice and this is just my initial thoughts there. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Do you think that the cold case has some kind of tie in to what's going on? Do you believe that Howard lied about knowing that Gravy was a cadaver dog? Let me know all of your thoughts. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Dallas and I'll see you on the rooftop.